Hey everyone, Madrybred here. Pokemon Fire Red with only Jigglypuff was a rough run. Let's follow that up with one that might be even rougher. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Fallout New Vegas while always sneaking? So, how exactly does sneaking work? Well, at any time, you can just crouch and go into sneaking mode. Enemies will need to be closer to you to see or hear you, but you also move much slower. It's a solid trade-off, and I sneak quite a bit when I play Fallout New Vegas casually, but if I sneak through the whole game, that just means I'm gonna have a very hard time maneuvering in the fights that I do get into. We're gonna have to fight smart if we want to win this run. Like always, I'm reading this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I'm pretty sure that this is possible, but I'm paranoid about the final fight of the game. I might have to get really creative to win some of the bigger fights. Let's explain the rules. We can only move while sneaking. I don't know if the game will ever force us to stand up, but I figure that if crouch walking is our rule, then we should be good. Plus, we have to stand up to talk to people anyway. Hardcore mode is on, so we have to worry about eating and drinking, otherwise we'll get stat penalties. Lastly, only cosmetic mods are allowed, but I just don't have any mods installed. Also, if you enjoy the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So let's start with character creation. Now, I know this will shock you to your very core, but I think that investing in Sneak is going to pay off in this run. Unfortunately, Sneak doesn't have many good perks for this run, so I'm going to have to invest in some combat skills too. Agility, perception, luck, and some intelligence is what I end up going with for stats. We only need a 6 in agility, perception, and luck to get the perks we want, and the intelligence is mostly so we can get a lot of skill points. For tags, I pick guns, medicine, and sneak. Guns for fighting, sneak for sneaking, and medicine so that we can make the most out of our healing items. Sneaky Pete is ready for action. Alright, so here's the plan. We could sneak to New Vegas pretty easily the same way we did on the previous Fallout New Vegas run, but I don't want to do the same thing. I think it'd be more interesting if we took the intended path, since we would walk around a pretty huge chunk of the map doing that. It'll take a while, since our movement speed is terrible while sneaking, but you'll get to see all new locations, so let's have an adventure. Oh, and by the way, remember last New Vegas run where I said that I'd be streaming this game more on Twitch? Uh, well, I have, and it's been great. There should be a highlight video of the streams edited at some point on the channel. I'm still working on that bit as a bit of a background project. Right, back to this video, though. First, we have to make our way towards Prim. On my way, I have some easy fights with some Powder Gangers, pretty early human enemies. Most of these guys only take one sneak attack to take down, so we have an easy time getting most of our early guns and ammo from them. The path to Prim itself is pretty easy. We got attacked by a gecko at one point, but we weren't in any real danger. Here's Prim! So this is actually a pretty cool little town where a bunch of bandits have taken over one half of the town, while the other half is occupied by the NCR's troopers. When we got here, I did something I've never done before. I just crouch walked right down the main road and didn't see a single enemy. Well, oh, that was quick. Down the road a bit, we run into a highway patrol station. Both the inside and the outside of this place have a bunch of weak bandits. Normally I wouldn't bring up the enemies that really don't matter, but a lot of them dropped leather armor and that's better than our default volt suit by a lot, so I make sure to grab as much of that as I can. As we got farther down the road, I saw the general store surrounded by rad scorpions and decided to try my luck at fighting them. Our single barrel shotgun did a decent job when we'd crit, but this actually ended up being really rough. We can hardly move, so getting swarmed by melee enemies drains our health pretty fast. We actually ended up losing tons of ammo here for very little in return, since there wasn't any good loot in this place that I could find, we didn't have the lockpicking skill for the safe. For the sake of saving up our healing items, I fast travel back to Good Springs to drink tap water for entire minutes on end to heal up our wounds for free. It's slow, but we're gonna need to save stim packs for later for sure. Next, we have to pass through Nipton, but on our way we get ambushed by more bandits. We were actually out-equipped here, but thanks to some local ants and rad scorpions, some of the bandits got distracted. It seems like one of the best ways we can handle our low movement speed is to just hide around corners and let them come to us, since our VATS accuracy is really good close up. <laughs> Once we get to Nipton, we- Yeah! Who won the lottery? I did! Smell that air! Couldn't you just drink it like booze? <laughs> Powder ganger? What? I mean, yeah, used to be, sure. But not no more. 
Powder Gang is small time, man. I'm a winner! I won the motherfucking lottery! <laughs> Bye. Man, I wonder what happened to that guy. Right, so this is Nipton. Or was Nipton. Caesar's Legion rolled through here recently and wrecked the place. Apparently they thought this place was a hive of scum and villainy. So they rounded up everyone, had them play the lottery, and one lucky winner got to live to tell everyone what happened. Who knows what happened to that guy, though? I'm sure he's fine, let's not dwell on that, we have to hit the road. On our way through the winding roads to Novak, we got ambushed a few times. It wasn't too bad overall, but we did have to look out for some pretty sneaky landmines. A bit further down the road, we ran into a merchant who was in a shootout with a legion. This was great because it meant we got to loot the bodies without wasting our own bullets. The gear wasn't amazing, but they do drop cowboy repeaters, and that's a solid weapon for this point in the game. By the way, pretty much any time I see a huge billboard at this point, I just assume bandits are going to jump out from behind them. I swear I've almost died to this a few times now. So here's Novak, named after the no vacancy sign at the local motel, I think. There's actually a really cool companion quest here, but the dude we get shoots at the Legion on sight, so I'd rather not have him right now. He's just going to blow our cover. Let's head north. New Vegas isn't too far off now. Now, the path north is actually surprisingly uneventful. I get the feeling I was supposed to get a few encounters, but that our stealth skill is actually high enough that the enemies on the side of the road didn't see us. We did have to fight some bandits near the billboard, though, because of course we did. Got some reinforced leather armor out of it, too. Not bad. We're getting so close. It's just a little ways left to go. The next stretch of the road is shockingly uneventful. Half our travel time was spent in the ruins of Vegas, and this place has lots of locations and bandits, but we just never ran into any. Maybe it was the sneaking, and maybe it was just the path we took, but I didn't see a single enemy. Here we are, Freeside. That means we're super close to the new Vegas Strip. Some dudes attack us here, but usually it takes like one or two bullets, and then they run away. I mean, who wouldn't run when you have this man-beast crawl hobbling towards you? Sneaky Pete's a monster. You don't mess with him. Anyway, so we need to get into the strip again, and by far the best way to do that is just by doing those quick and easy quests for the kings again. You already saw those quests in the previous New Vegas challenge, and there's no fighting that we have to do, so let's not waste your time. You really don't want to see me crawl walk back and forth across Freeside for a half an hour. All that matters is that we leveled up a couple times at the end, so I dumped a bunch of skill points into guns and sneak. We also picked up a point of luck through intense training, as well as the toughness perk for a little bit better armor. So here we are, the New Vegas Strip. Like last time, Mr. House wants us to get the platinum chip from Benny. We don't have the speech skill to get him alone like last time, but I have a funnier idea. I reverse pickpocketed a grenade into his Look pocket. Out. I broke both of my arms doing it, but it worked. How'd it kill the dudes behind me? Hey, did you guys not hear that? Well, doing that leveled us up more and got us lots of hats, so that's pretty cool. Our gun skill is almost maxed out at this point. I've just been taking more toughness perks whenever I get the choice, although I think I might take Grunt next time. That's a solid damage upgrade. Also, for as much as I've sneaked across the map already, it's the strip that feels especially slow. Maybe it just feels longer because it's the same few areas over and over, just like Freeside. Actually, no, Freeside felt slower. Now, we have the chip, and we could go to Mr. House, but he's just gonna send us to Caesar's camp anyway, so I may as well just go straight there. Our closest fast travel point is Novak, so we travel from there. Now, I wish I could say that this whole trip was a non-stop action fest, but I actually had to go out of my way to take out this Viper camp, just because I wanted something to show you in the footage. I didn't naturally run into a single encounter on the whole trip to the coast. I was kind of worried about this, but not only do we move slow so it sucks to play, but no one sees us so the footage sucks to watch. It's just a dude slowly crouch walking across a desert. Let's go shoot some robots. So, Caesar told us to go underground and destroy Mr. House's robots. Mr. House is confused to see us here since he hasn't told us to go here yet, and I tell him I'm working for Caesar now. That's right, we're spicing up this run. I got a little extra time this week, let's join Caesar's Legion. Why not? 
This place is mostly pretty easy, actually. We just take it slow and pick things off with a 10mm pistol. They're slow and lumbering, so it's not too much of an issue. Once we destroy a bunch of the place's... generators? The place starts falling apart. I had to take a bunch of pills for rad resistance, and we're still getting some rad poisoning out of this. There were some extra strong security bots on the way out, but we just walked past them to make it out easily. Caesar gives us the task of taking down Mr. House, so it's back to the Lucky 38. Since I never brought the Platinum Chip back to Mr. House, he never got a chance to upgrade his security bots. That doesn't mean that they're easy, though. As soon as I got in the front door, I got most of my limbs blown up from their grenade launchers. I had such a war with these guys at the front door that I really wasn't sure I could handle this place yet. We blew through so much of our ammo that I decided to just use Benny's special 9mm pistol. It's not amazing, but at least they drop 9mm ammo when I take them down. After having all my limbs blown off, I decided to go to the presidential suite to get a nice 8 hour sleep to fix all my limbs. Mr. House knows I'm here, right? I mean, he knows what his robots are doing, so he must know we're here. I feel like I probably shouldn't be able to get away with this. Anyway, once I get into the penthouse, I'm instantly having to peek around corners and play it safe. There are tons of robots in here that attack from all kinds of different angles. It takes tons of shots to take any of them down, and this is with almost maxed out gun skill. Our super low speed from sneaking means that it's pretty dangerous to go out in the open, but during the fight, after losing some limbs, we just went to the elevator, had another nice nap, and came back! Once I fought my way into the secret side room, it seems like the rest of them just lost track of us. So I just rushed the last few robots so that they wouldn't get a chance to use their grenade launchers, then got inside. No time to talk, I just let Mr. House out of his pod and shot him. Let's report back to Caesar. Once we get back, he says we did a good job and let us know that we have to go meet up with the Boomers. We're offering to let them stay independent once the Legion conquers New Vegas if they use their artillery to bomb the NCR force during the invasion. If they don't comply, we have to take them out so that they can't be a real threat for us. Alright, it's artillery field time. This place always sucks. We have to try to cover ground towards their camp whenever they're reloading and hide when they're firing. This is a pain on a good day, but we're already extra slow from sneaking, so this was really rough. After finally being taken to see their leader, she tells us that we can just go around and do a bunch of chores for her. Yeah, lady, do you have any idea how many shells you shot at me? That's not what I'm here for. That's one half of the leaders of this place down, but we have to take out Loyal, the other dude. I snuck around the place for a little while before finding the warehouse he's in. I ended up fighting a boomer on the outside, and man this silenced pistol does almost nothing to him. When we get inside, we instantly get attacked by two dudes, so I switch to the 9mm and take him out. Hey, one of them was our target! We're done here! Once we get back to Caesar, he says that he wants us to go forge an alliance with the White Glove Society and that we can use their past as cannibals against them. Well, it's not exactly past, but whatever. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but we talked to a few people here and although some of them were interested, they all still said no. I let Caesar know and he called me a failure, then let us know that we have to go take out the local Brotherhood of Steel bunker. Well, that's easier said than done. Let's go give it a shot. As soon as I got in there and they started walking towards me, I got the jump on them with some plasma grenades. It ended up launching one of their Gauss rifles towards me, so I grabbed it and used it to shoot down the other soldiers while I was over-encumbered. This place is gonna be rough. This Gauss rifle is pretty much the only thing that does serious damage to them, and we have very little energy weapon skill, so this is inaccurate and weak. It's not good. Even just getting through the next door took a few tries, because we're using energy weapons against them, but have almost no skill for it. Plus, they just melt us fast with their weapons. I had to leave and get proper healing often. The farther I got in here, the more I realized we absolutely do not stand a chance right now. We get taken down in two good shots from any of their proper weapons, and the place is crawling with dudes! Plus, we hardly hurt them. We need better gear. I ended up going to Westside, where there's a pawn shop that's very easy to steal from. The most important loot here was the hunting rifle. These things are super strong in New Vegas compared to Fallout 3. I also picked up some reinforced metal armor and a combat helmet. All of this mixed with dropping a bunch of money at the Gunrunners for armor-piercing rounds, and I'm feeling pretty good. Sneaky Pete's ready to go. 
So our new armor doesn't really save us a ton, but at least our rifle with armor-piercing rounds can one-shot them on head crits. Unfortunately, I tried this over and over and over with so many different strategies. Eventually, the one that worked was leading them back through the hallways while firing at them non-stop with grenade launchers. I took many tries, but eventually, eventually, we left a pile of limbs in our wake. We scavenged some recon armor off the bodies for more armor for ourselves, and that's when we got stuck at the weirdest part. The turrets are way too strong for us. We hardly damage them, they melt us, and we can't just run past them because we're sneaking. Wanna know the solution I found? If you leave the bunker and come back, they just de-aggro. I have no idea why, but they only pick you out as an enemy once they see other soldiers attacking you. It's so weird. We also picked up the mysterious stranger perk. I, uh... Don't think it's working correctly. This isn't an editing gig, by the way. It's just still like this. Look, I'm, I'm clicking buttons. Nothing's happening. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. In the final area, we just had to keep popping into rooms, picking dudes off with our rifle, and moving to the next room. The last room itself was just full of scribes, so we had to pump the room full of grenades yet again. I have to say, this is easily the single hardest dungeon I have had to do in any Bethesda challenge. They actually make you take out every last person here rather than just the leaders like we did with the boomers. It was really, really brutal. Once we get back to Caesar, he tells us that something's wrong with him, medically. We need to find a part to repair his auto dock so that we can figure out what's wrong with him and perform the surgery on him. He lets us know of a ghoul infested vault that might have the part that we need and tells us to go there. Cool. Can't you, uh, send back up with me? This seems pretty important. Just one dude? I wish I had the medic skill to just skip this quest. The vault actually ended up being pretty easy, though. The lead up to it was just a bunch of golden geckos who really couldn't take many hits. And the inside of the vault had ghouls who dropped 10mm ammo, so I just took them out with my 10mm pistol. The item we needed was on the first floor, so it took no time at all. Once I get back inside, I installed the auto dock thing, fixed his tumor, and leveled up. We maxed out our sneak, got a bunch of medicine skill. We also took the silent running perk. That makes it so that we don't make so much noise based on our equipment when we sneak. It's really nice. Oh, and real casually, he tells us to go take out the president of the NCR. All right, boss. So we meet up with one of our dudes and right away I pickpocket him to get a vertebrate bomb since he wouldn't normally give it to us without passing a 50 explosive check in conversation. He gives us an NCR disguise and lets us know that we're on a tight time limit. That's real, by the way. You can actually fail this, either by running out of time or by, well, failing it. You know, not taking out the president. In the end, though, I couldn't sneak up to the helipad, even with my maxed out skill, so I just ended up blasting the president with a Gauss rifle when he showed up. I mean, I blasted him with... there we go. Thanks to our crazy stealth skill, we pretty much just turned around and walked away. They lost us just about instantly. Alright, all that's left is the Battle of Hoover Dam itself. We meet up with Legate Lanius, and he just lets us know that if we take out the general, they'll retreat. Alright, we have a mission. Let's go do the final battle. The whole first section is fighting our way across the top of the dam. We have some legionary grunts backing us up, but they really don't stand a chance against the NCR rangers and troopers. Thankfully, the troopers dropped a bunch of sniper rifles and ammo for them, so we quickly started using their own snipers to pick them off, one by one. It's actually pretty incredible seeing just how blind they are. Sometimes I'll pick someone off just for the trooper beside him to not notice at all. The top of the dam went super smoothly. Right when we got to the end of the dam, the cons showed up to back us up. A little late, guys. I already cleared the entire top side. Next, we have to start going through the inside of the dam to find the general of the army. The place is massive, we move super slow, and I get lost easily. This section is actually not that hard, believe it or not. We ended up taking ranger gear off some of the bodies, since it's better armor than what we wear anyway. So between wearing NCR gear and our amazing sneak skill, enemies often wouldn't be able to find me in these giant rooms. Because of that, we got tons of sneak attacks and easy kills, as well as some pretty sweet weapons. Once we get into the final section, I take out some easy enemies in a mini maze and make my way up to the trap room. This place has rangers shooting at us from far away while we have to dodge constant tripwires and bombs. 
We actually ended up stepping in a bear trap on our way through here, and we have no doctor bags to repair it. So we're going into the final fight of the game with a broken leg and while well, always crawling. I'm really not feeling good about this. Once we get into the final room, I pretty quickly pick off the general just for the game to tell me that I have to take out his bodyguards too. You know, the guys in power armor that I can hardly damage. This is going to be really rough. There were dudes with super sledges and shotguns, so we had to deal with ranged and melee combat quite a bit here. Critical headshots with a rifle can take them out, but we still have to rely on vats whenever we can, just on the off chance that the mysterious stranger backs us up. Thankfully, I had been pouring tons of points into medicine the last few levels, so we heal a lot per stim pack. It took quite a few tries, but eventually we were able to get the win, mostly because they would lose sight of us pretty quickly once we thinned out their numbers, letting us sneak up on them and get some more easy kills near the end. With the battle done, Legate Lanius congratulated us, and we get the credits, officially winning the run. I have to say, that got so much harder than I was expecting. I knew the Battle of Hoover Dam was going to be rough, but I didn't even consider that I would have to fight my way through the Brotherhood of Steel base. It just didn't come to mind. When I was originally planning this run, I wasn't thinking I was going to do Caesar's Legion, but then I thought, oh, I've got some extra time this week. And then I ended up working late to get this done because it took me so long. But I'm smiling right now. It was a fun time. I hope you guys liked that run. For next Saturday's challenge, it's back to Pokemon with Pokemon Red, only Butterfree. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. If you want to see me do more challenges like this, then please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should do next. Also, check out the playlist in the description if you want to watch all the challenges that I've already uploaded. Also, come to my Twitch TV streams and tell me that this video sent you. It's always cool to hear how you found the channel. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.